Hold on to five on the floor of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Red Circle. Also, the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. Also, we wanted to alert everybody. If you are a follower of Off the Floor through the Winnow service, that is going to be discontinued at the end of October. That's not us. That's them. The service no longer exists. We're actually going to be moving to a platform that is going to give us a lot more flexibility and allow you to, to get a lot more content from us. It's going to be extremely cool. It's going to be based on what Three Yards Per Carry, one of our partners in the Five Reasons Sports Network, does with OnlyFins. It's also still going to be called Off the Floor, and we're going to be unveiling this Discord on November 1st. So be on the lookout for it. You are going to want to subscribe. Trust us. We also want to mention a great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, Rock Esports Center, ROK Esports Center, Miami's first esports center and lounge down in Palmetto Bay, 15305 South Dixie Highway, 5,500 square foot state of the art center, equipped with everything that you need. They got the all day passes for 25 bucks. If you mention Five Reasons or Five RSN, it's $5 off for $20. But we also want to tell you our first ever 2K tournament is going to be after Celtics Heat. Friday, upcoming Friday, Friday, October 27th, Alex is going to be hosting from down there, the 2K tournament at least, and also, obviously, we're going to have a podcast. So check them out at Rock Esports Center and come join. Alex will tell and you watch about party. it during the episode. Watch party. Join the 2K tournament. We're going to tell you about the link where you can do that. Um, it's going to be $30 to join that tournament, and there will be others from the Five Reasons Sports Network who will be participating. And now... Today's episode. Down to Biscay. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing. You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck is saying, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Today's floor plan, I got Alex Toledo, you can follow him at Tropical Blanket. Got Brady Hawk, you can follow him at Brady Hawk 305. We're going to do two episodes and then a third. So we're going to do two episodes that are break down the offense and the defense for the Miami Heat prior to the season starting on Wednesday against Detroit at home. And then we will do our prediction episode, which will likely post Tuesday night into Wednesday. We're going to start with the offense today, and we're going to look at where they were and where they are and where they could go. So that's the direction that we're going to take this on a variety of statistical fronts, strategic fronts, personnel fronts, and all of that. Try to give you a quick 20-minute synopsis here, and then we'll come back and do the same for the defense. So let's get right to it. We're going to do some up downs here with the guys. Okay. So I'm going to get into some of the stats from last year and whether or not they think that they'll be better. Now we're going to use the regular season rankings, although we know that some things changed in the postseason a little bit. And obviously in some cases the heat would like to have more of the postseason numbers than the regular season numbers, at least when it comes to three point percentage. Uh, but let's start right here uh, from the very beginning. And this plays into pace uh and and kind of the direction that that goes and i'm not sure why that's on my screen there we go okay last season brady the heat were 30th in the league in field goals made 30th in the league so last okay we know that pace plays into this but so of course does accuracy and efficiency will they be better because they can't be worse yeah, I think this is uh, – I think I'll definitely be right with this one. I'm going to go with up. I, I think this is – they're going to have more uh, – a better look this year. I guess they could be even. I guess they, they could be neither up or down. They could just be 30th again. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's funny just looking at these numbers and the fact that we're doing this up-down thing because it's very hard to, for them to go down in any of these categories after looking at, like, stuff they did last season. Even individually, I was looking stuff earlier today, like looking at individual percentages and all this different stuff from the guys in the regular season. I'm like, man, no wonder they ended up in the play-in where they did because, like, it's been, we, we got so caught up at what they did in the in the playoffs that we for, kind of, like, I feel like forgot about how bad they were offensively in that regular season. So, yeah, place, pace def, definitely plays into it. With that said, I absolutely do not think 
they're going to be playing any faster. We could have that discussion like we have every year to start the year, uh, especially with some of the lineups we're talking about. Ethan, I know that you've talked about you know, Kyle starting with Kevin Love and defensively, but like as much as Kyle throws the hit-ahead passes, that's not like a fast lineup that you're looking at that's going to just run teams out of the building. Like that's not uh, – if you put Josh and Kayla Martin in for Kevin Love and Kyle, like yeah, maybe you could see them forcing turnovers, going in the other direction, you know, a little bit of higher pace. Not with this lineup. So the field goals made thing, I don't even know what's really – the fact that you're, you're – <laughs> the percentage is that low and also just the overall field goals, that stuff is just really wild how they ended up where they did. But it's going to come down to a lot of things with, with health, I think, just in terms of if we – I know we did that last episode before, which was a terrible idea, uh, talking about potential injuries. But when the main guys are healthy, I mean, th that's what all this is revolving around because we're looking at these these role players and we're talking about which guy can pop, which young guy can pop out and kind of find his way into ro in a rotation, this and that, which uh, Jamal Cain or Haywood Highsmith or guy could shoot above his head this season. But ideally, they just need their main guys to be healthy, and that'll kind of move the offense in the right direction because it creates the looks necessary. So to answer your question, yeah, I think they're going to be above 30th this season. Well, they were 30th in field goals made, uh, 26 in field goals attempted. So I'll go to this one, Alex. We'll skip uh, skip the field goals attempted one because that does play into pace a little bit. Field goal percentage overall last year. Not, not, you know, not an advanced stat, but just a basic stat. Field goal percentage, 26th in the NBA at 46%. Do you think they'll be better? I actually think so. I think so. Because I think last year they had such a bad shooting season where even though it doesn't feel like they added shooting um, this summer necessarily, um, I do feel like it would it would be kind of surprising if it was that bad for 80 percent of the season again like because we saw it swing wildly from one direction to the other from the season before right where they were at the top so you would think it would be somewhere in between now it might not it might not be great it could it could be 20th instead of 25th or 27th or whatever uh, when you talk about the threes but i think it'll be a little better so when you um account for that when you account for like brady said if there's a little bit better health that that obviously helps if you have your better players uh, playing and helping set up the other guys. And I think also um, I trust the stuff that they did in the mid range. I think that's the, the most dependable part of their offense because all three of their best players have a little bit of the mid range bag in their game in obviously different ways, but they all can get to it. And it's a shot that all three of them like to get to. Um, Jimmy doesn't do it as much in the regular season, but I, he can do it. Um, Obviously, Tyler and Bam do it. I, um, Gabe did it last season. I think Josh will be doing it this season. Um, obviously, Hawkins is somebody who who liked to play in that, you know, inside the arc a little bit and get shots up there. I don't know how much he'll be playing. That's not really that much of a factor into this. But what I'm saying is I think that part of their offense is dependable. Um, I, they were seventh in the league last season in mid-range percentage. They also did it at a very high volume. And so when you look at that, it's, you know, they're – it, it, it checks off the boxes that you want to see. And then the other part there is the rim. And I feel like that's always kind of the swing, the swing factor with the heat, because you always want to see them finish at the rim better and get to the rim more. And that's not somewhere they've been really strong outside of Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler the past few seasons. So I think if you're counting on a little bit of a step from Bam and Tyler, there, just, you know, being better versions of themselves, that gives you a couple more rim attempts. I feel like, you know, Caleb having a full season where he's going to be doing his thing. I don't know. You, you might be getting some upside there, but I don't know how much there will be. So all of that is to say the field goal percentage will be up. It won't be up by that, you know, a whole lot, I think. All right, let's get to three-point uh, stuff here, Brady. Um, I don't want to get to the three-point percentage first, okay? I just want to look at another number first. They were 17th overall in three-pointers made in the regular season last year, 10th in attempts. So let me just ask you this, because this is more of a distribution question than an accuracy question. Will they be up or down from that number of attempts? Do you think they will be in the top 10 in attempts from three again? I might go down in attempts. Just because, talking, Alex just hinted the fact that like, they didn't, add a bunch of shooters this offseason. You're basically flipped Gabe and Max for Josh and what Thomas Bryant, I guess in a, in a way. Uh, so I guess, yeah. 
and Hawkins, I guess, if he kind of plays in that mix. So I feel like on paper, they shouldn't be getting that many up. Uh, Max being at what he was, I'm looking at it right here last season, he was at seven attempts a game from three, which was second on the team, only behind Tyler. Like, are they going to replace that? Like, ideally, I think that would be Duncan. But I don't think he's getting to seven a game because I don't think he's playing as much as Max did. And I just don't see him getting up that many a game personally. Tyler, I think, could actually go up in three-point attempts. He was at eight. He led the team. I still believe he's going to lean in three-point shooting a lot more. So maybe those kind of numbers go up. But I think the overall role players behind them are not going to be at the same level that they were last season. And then what, what also he would when he's back though, because I feel like th- there's a little that could come from there, right? Maybe mm-hmm. a little bit more from Caleb, perhaps. Although maybe Caleb full season of Caleb uh, and a full season of Caleb, but he's not getting Although a lot of attempts. Full minutes for Caleb, yeah, that's the thing. And then the and then other thing Kyle is too. right. Maybe. And are we betting on that? I don't, I don't know if that's no. going to be something that we're going to see a high <laughs> high attempt Kyle Lowry out there in the starting lineup. Like, I just don't think we expect that. By the oh, way, Victor, that, that Oladipo, crazy. Victor Oladipo put up five threes a game last season. I don't know how he, he, he was getting up <laughs> an average five a game. You, you know what happened with that, though? It's like when he came back the second time last year and he was just so out of sorts and trying to force his way in. Yeah, he was a real detriment to that with all the three point shooting. So Mm -hmm. that actually hurt their percentage. I I think when we talk about the percentage part of this that people again forget is that Struess and Vincent were not uh, consistent from three or particularly accurate from three during the regular season. And they were uh, they were taking up a a large percentage of the attempts. I, I Here's my thought on it. I, I think that I think their attempts will probably go down slightly. I think that maybe into the 11 to 15 range. In the league, I think their percentage will come up. I don't think they're going to be anywhere close to 27th. I, I think that they, for everybody who's like complaining, well, they lost Struis and Vincent. Again, those were two guys who shot the three a lot, who didn't shoot it well during the regular season. Plus, like you said, they're eliminating Oladipo. Josh, as long as you don't up his volume too much, uh, has been a pretty decent three-point shooter. And I do think, you know, when Highsmith gets back in there, he's shown clear improvement there. Love can't There's, be a whole lot worse, and there's not going to be a whole lot of of uh, of reps for him anyway. So, I I think they could be in the twelve to fifteen range in three point percentage. I mean, if if I was to say to both of you right now that that's where they're at, they're kind of in the in the eleven to fifteen range in attempts and eleven to fifteen range in percentage. Would you both take that for this offense? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Especially when your two best players are not three point shooters, and you're in the eleven to fifteen bracket. That's exactly where you want to be. I think, that Ethan, you're, you're mentioning players I was going to have at throw at you. Does Jimmy, you think, get up more attempts? Because, I mean, you see him in these videos and everything, putting up these three-point shots that mean absolutely nothing. I just want to put that out there because I think mm-hmm. people see, like, these videos. Of course he's going to be shooting shots like that in the offseason. That's what the, that time is for. But it never really translates to the regular season, especially. I'm just curious because he shot over one, one and a half threes a game last season, shot 35% from three. Like does that? I think that's probably where he lands. Pretty like he much around. Some other nights he's feeling lazy. Honestly, like I, I don't know that you <laughs> want too many of those nights. I th- look. There's a better chance of his uptick than Bam's. Okay, I, so let's give mm-hmm. up on the Bam thing. Uh, but I, I don't think it's going to be something consistent, and I don't think it's something that fans are going to want. I to me, the Jimmy three point shooting is similar to the Dwayne three point shooting, where you know you want him to be able to make one when he's in rhythm, when it matters. And sometimes he gets on a little bit of a run, but when he starts doing it consistently, like when Dwayne started going on a run where he was taking a ton, we're like, what are you doing? Uh, and at this point, Jimmy's more effective with the other things than Dwayne was at that stage. So I, I wouldn't be in favor of it. I, I think I think the growth, uh, honestly, is going to come in, in a lot of ways from Martin and Highsmith, I, just being more accurate than they both were and more comfortable in various places on the floor. Caleb only put up three a game last season, and that's going up. He literally – I think that goes – That doubles five, positively. I do. Yeah, I, I do. think that'll I be the one to watch to see how he yeah. how that percentage stabilizes with higher volume because I, I could I could see that too him taking more with an increased role but because mm-hmm. he's he's actually one of the guys who was pretty stable from three last season throughout yeah. the regular season and in the playoffs and the season before. Yes, no, I, I think he's the one on the uptick. We just haven't gotten a chance to see it in the preseason because of the knee situation. But again, I don't think that one is serious. All right. Uh, a couple more here, and then after the break, I'm going to do some rapid-fire questions with you about specific players. But let's get to the free-throw shooting because this plays into it. Um, last year, 
10th and 10th and makes, even though they were 19th in attempts, which is pretty damn good efficiency. And the reason for that was because they were second in overall free throw percentage. Now, um, Max didn't get to the line a lot. Gabe didn't get to the line a lot. So you're not losing anything there. So it's pretty much the same basic group. They haven't added a bad free throw shooter um, to the mix. We know Jimmy's excellent. Tyler's terrific. He just needs to get there more often. Bam's pretty damn good for a big. Uh, Caleb's fairly consistent there when he gets there. See, I think there could be an uptick there for him also with more respect. Um, Do you think, guys, first thing that they can up, Let's go to the attempts number because I'm not concerned about the percentage number. The percentage number is what kept them in a lot of games late and helped them win a lot of clutch games. Can they be better than 19th in the league in attempts? Either of you. Um, I think so. I think so. But also, also just a quick thing, just to kind of give that stat some perspective, they were 13th in the league in free throw rate, which basically what it mm-hmm. does is um, it, it gives Thanks. you the ratio of free throws attempted to field goals attempted. So when you're comparing mm-hmm. to kind of the, you know, it's basically accounting for pace and the heat slower pace. When you're accounting for it, it's 13th in the amount of free throws um, instead of 19. So that kind of makes it look it, a little bit more like what you'd expect from the heat. And I think like you add Tyler and Bam getting, you know, one or two more a game, however many it is. I, I think that helps. Jimmy is going to be a lead at it. Like you said, Caleb is an attacker. I think that he's going to be used as an attacker with, with a bigger role this season. I think if Hakez plays, like he's an attacker as well. And I, I think it kind of goes back to the theme, and I may be wrong about this, that they're going to get the rim attempts up just a little bit. You know, instead of being second to last in the league in, you know, percentage of shots taken at the rim, it'll be somewhere in the 20s. And, and I think that uptick will help the free throws and the field goal, like I mentioned earlier, which, by the way, they were 25th in both effective field goal percentage and offensive rating last season. So no matter how you strike it, I mean, it, it was bad. Yeah, I, and that's that's the last number we hit here before I go to break. Go, go ahead, Brady. I was just oh, gonna say, bad. I was just gonna say really quickly that Bam and Tyler specifically, I think those the free throw attempt numbers are gonna go up, and that's probably gonna be a main thing for it. But I want to say the the ranking of free throw attempted last season, the regular season, was one Jimmy, two Bam, three Tyler, four Kyle, and do you guys know who fifth was? It was Cody Zeller. So. I mean, that was in, in limited games, I'll say. But it, just in general, I think that gives you an idea of, like, the guys in terms of role players are not highly attacking. What, what about throw. Caleb, though? That, that's, that's the again, one guy Caleb's I was going to say. becomes the X Factor. Just like I was going to say, in the playoffs, I remember we did every series preview. and every series, we would say, Caleb's the X Factor. We do every regular season preview now. We're talking about the offense or defense. It's like Caleb's the X Factor. He really is, though, because he's the guy that kind of moved the needle in a way as their fourth guy. Uh and I think there is a general respect in Caleb's overall offensive ability and shooting that people saw in the playoffs that that'll open up his lanes and that'll allow him to get to the rim a little more. And we know what he can do around the rim. He has great finishing. He's not afraid to take the contact. So I can very much see uh, his attempt number going up. And then, you know, Duncan obviously is not going to get to the line a bunch. I, I, I don't really know if Kyle's number is going to go probably stay around the same. I don't think it's going to change much either, especially with the minutes. RJ Hampton? Drew Smith might be able to get to the line a few uh, as what I've seen <laughs> if, if his gravity continues. But other than that, Caleb's probably the one guy. And I mean, Josh probably could as well. If Josh can continue to attack. He, he always had modest numbers uh, getting to the It'll line. It'll be like maybe, Gabe. Maybe a, Hills will be like yeah, Gabe. Yeah, sim- similar, similar to Gabe, which is not a lot, but he'll make the free throws when he gets there. All right, real quick on this one, because I want to get to the overall offensive rating one, and then I do want to get to the, uh, the rapid fire here afterwards. So last year, 25th in the league in assists. Ninth in turnovers, so not a lot of spectacular stuff, not a lot of mistakes, but that feels like a pace thing to me. Like their turnovers were down in part because they didn't push the tempo that much, and the assists are down because the possessions are down. Um, They don't even have Gabe now, who was not a traditional point guard, but I'll just ask this, and we don't need to dwell on this one a a whole bunch, but um, uh, is there a concern their turnover number is going to go up? Now, with not with what their ball handling group looks like, or no. Um. Because hmm. I don't think the assists are going to go significantly up. I don't. I, I. My question is, I mean, again, they have some decent passers. That's not the problem. It's just, 
again, the, the flow of their offense, and they don't really have a true point guard who's going to log, you know, get 10, 11. They get James Harden, you know, again, I'll have to throw on a wig again, but yeah, their assist numbers will likely go up, I would think. In lieu of that, you know, they're 25th, right? Sounds about right? 25th when because- it comes to assists? Assists, ninth in turnovers last year. What if I told you they were 14th in assist percentage? Okay. See, again, pace adjusted, right? Essentially. Yeah. So it's, it looks a lot better when you look at it like, oh, they're right in the middle of the league instead of bottom five. And the turnover percentage, which also, um, of course, accounts for for pace. They were about middle of the pack, too. They were, let me see, 15th. So they were about mm-hmm. middle of the pack in assist and, to, and turnover percentage. Okay. I mean, that's Let's what they to- were as a team. They were they were just middle of the pack. I just want to say, like, so it makes sense. So, like, they have to just kind of get – like, a couple of these these stat categories have to like, be above average, I'll say, like, just to be able to push that over the top. And it feels like – I mean, they're not going to be spectacular in the assists and turnover areas. That's not what this team is built around. It, I'm just going to say it because we, we talked about the three-point shooting already – but that feels like the one stat that we talked about that has to change the most. Like, it's that simple. Right. They just have to shoot better. They went from a one seed because they were the best shooting team in the league to a playing team because they were one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the league. It's as simple as that. If they could find a way to find a guy that pops from three, they'll have, a, you know, a decent offense. And if they make more three-point shots, they'll have more assists on catch and shoots, and they'll have fewer turnovers had, probably. And, and that's had a, a couple guys but, attacking the rim off the bench. It'll probably be nice, too. Well, it, yeah, it would, but I don't, I don't, yeah. But again, they've changed the whole bench look, so we'll see what that what that is. All right, let let's get to it here. Uh, the big number, and then I'll get to the rapid fire after this. Twenty fifth in offensive rating, third thirtieth in points. Okay, which I mean, it is what it is. Twenty uh, fifth in offensive rating. That that's the important number. Up or down, Brady. I mean, it's another one that's got to go up. I mean, the points a game thing kind of makes sense because they were in so many clutch games that it just felt like every time it got down to the fourth quarter, it was just a dog fight. And whoever had just had the, the ball last was probably going to end up winning, which that, hey, that's the one category you didn't talk about because they were the leader in, in clutch moments. Can we give them credit for that? I don't know if that's they even were, credit. And, Is that and, a good and thing? I said a lot of that, a lot of that had to do with the fact that they were really good at the line actually. Yes. And their defense. It had more and to not do turning with over the ball team. in the clutch and not turning over the ball. It wasn't because they were all this efficient offensive machine. They just, they didn't screw up a lot in those situations and they defended. And a lot of that is coaching, right? So I, I would assume that that stays, although it concerns me because in every sport, when you have like an outlier there, it tends to regress to the mean or progress to the mean. And again, you see that in the NFL right now with what's happening with the Vikings. They won like 11 close games last year. And I was like, go play them under because that won't repeat itself. That's the sort of thing that may happen with the heat where you start to lose some of those clutch games. But if their principles are good and their free throw and the defense is good and their free throw shooting is good, they should be able to to be still pretty good in those situations, even if the offensive rating is not high. Um, I'll I'll chime in here on their offensive rating. I think they're going to be closer to the teens this year, simply because I, I do think first thing they're leaning offense supposedly. We heard that before <laughs> last season, but at least the year is starting like that. We'll see how long it lasts. I don't know if they're leaning I offense this year. I, I I would think they're I, I think defense. they're just leaning towards placating Kyle, but that's a whole nother story. But I, <laughs> I think that uh I think that they're gonna be better offensively for the one thing you guys are talking about. I just can't see them shooting that poorly from three again. I can't and knock on something, but it was they were at one point last year, they were leading the league in open three point looks. Like Coop was monitoring this and they were like twenty eighth in the league in three point percentage. And it was guys who'd been okay shooters before at worst, you know, and, you know, guys like Gabe and Max. And it was just odd. I do think that if Duncan can shake whatever he's going through in this preseason and get more minutes, that that could increase the overall percentage. And I I think Caleb and Haywood, when he comes back, their ability to shoot from more places on the floor and be threats more often, get them both into the mid 30s. You know, on three to five attempts, I, I think that's a positive. I think Josh could be there also. That's so probably the, the swing guys there, right? Like Caleb, Josh, right. and Haywood. And Duncan's playing time. That That's of the course, swing yeah. to me. Yeah, that's that's the swing to me. And Kyle shooting it. But that's the one that I'm not going to count on. All right, so uh, do all of us think they'll be better than 25th, though? Yeah. Okay. For sure. If you're a playoff team. To be t- 
Do any of them think they can be top 15? Mm, I don't believe so. I, I think, think they're they late teens. Get there. They can get there, but I doubt it. Like it would, it would have to mean like you know they're they're just firing on all cylinders. The threes are going, and I do believe there's some upside with them getting to the rim a little bit more. I'm not gonna act like it's gonna be a lot more because I think you know it's gonna take a lot of work when you know you're second to last in shots taken at the rim by percentage, and it's tough to you know um, see a huge jump there. But I do think you know. Um, if they have guys attacking off the rim, like I said, I mean, attacking the rim off the bench, I, I think that could help and, you know, get you some more offense going and maybe it's just a couple easier looks if, instead of always having to rely on your three best players. And it's not going to be a lot, but I think there's some some upside there. All right. When we come back, um, I'm going to ask you guys the the most traditional stat question I can. Not analytics, nothing like that. I'm going to throw it at you and I'll make you come up with it off, on the spot. But before we do... Before we do, you know what might get thrown at you? A hurricane. It's possible, right? Get those hurricane storm windows, those hurricane storm doors from our friends over at All Pro Construction Builders. We've been dodging it lately. I don't know how, but that's not going to last very long. 305-484-4429. 305-484-4429. State, state licensed, fully certified, family business. Danny's a huge Heat fan. Reach out to him directly. Mention five reasons. And you will get 10% off your entire order. They also do the renovations for your house, everything from kitchens on out. And we know right now, 8% interest rates, right? Really tight housing market. You may just want to stay where you're at, fix the place up. Go to allproconstructionbuilders.com or All Pro Construction Builders on Instagram. They're based in Miami. They service uh, not just uh, Broward, but also Monroe County. So 305-484-4429, All Pro Construction Builders. Make sure... You mentioned five reasons. All right, let's. I'm keeping track of this, and we're going to monitor it through the season. And it's good that I gave you a whole bunch of time to prep, which was none. Uh, give me in order. Who should I do this to first? Hmm. Give me an order, Alex. Uh, five leading scorers for the Miami Heat with their points per game. Oh my goodness! Actually, you know what? 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 I'm not going to make you do five because it's not fair to you. Because then Brady's going to get know what yours are. Just give me your top two with points per game. I'm going to make Brady do his full five, and then you can come back with your next uh, three. So go ahead. All right. All right. Um, this is for the full season. Um, I'm yeah. going to say Tyler on number out. one. Tyler Perkins. number one. I'm, I'm going to take the. Yep. I'm going to use your take from a couple of seasons ago. Uh, I think Tyler's going to be a leading scorer, and I think he really wants to be. And I think Jimmy and Bam wouldn't mind. Um, I think he's going to come what off number? firing, and and it'll probably end up. I want to say around 23 points per game, maybe 24 if he has a great season. Um, and I, honestly, I think that's good. That's that's really good if he's finishing there. I know we don't talk about points per game much, but just off of that by itself, that means he probably had a good season if they're willing to just let him be that guy for them throughout the season. Not that it will be that much usage over Jimmy and Bam. Number two. So 23.0, is that your number? That's how we're going. Uh, we're going to the desk. 20, 23.4, I don't know. That's twenty three point four. Okay, no, number writing two. It down. Number <laughs> okay. I, I, it's right, right here. I, I can see you writing it down. It's funny. It's good. It's right uh, what kind of notebook Go is ahead. that? Is that Moleskine? Uh, what, how do you Moleskine? Uh, this is Moleskine. Yes, Woj is going to write a uh, a loving <laughs> tribute to it. Um, it's going <laughs> to be a short uh, short story series, romance series. <laughs> Joe Cronin, Ethan Skolnick, and Adrian Rojakowski, or whatever his name is. Go ahead, continue. Well, that's going to be on the Discord, I, I assume. Anyways. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, number two, uh, I'll say Bam. I'll say Bam. I think it won't be by much over Jimmy. I think it'll be very like a minuscule difference, but I'm gonna say twenty-one point three. Twenty-one point three. All right, Brady. Actually, just you do it this way. Give us your top. Uh, give us your top two first, and then I'll jump in. Okay, I also have Tyler in first. I think he's. North of 24. I'll say 24.1. He's just okay. he's just slightly over the top of 24. I just think he's the guy that's going to kind of pop for this offense and kind of get a bunch of shots up. Number two, I do think it's Jimmy. I think he's probably similar to where he was last season. I'll say like 23. I don't remember. Oh, actually, he didn't say Jimmy. He said Bam. But I'll say like 23.3. I think they, those, they, they have to be a top-heavy team. They have to. It's just when I look at it on paper – depending on how many games they obviously play. So those are my the, the two guys. Uh, and then, Ethan, I think the issue is after you – I think we're all going to have a similar four, 
But the fifth guy is where we're going to have like the. I'm, I'm giving you some time to think about it. But here, all right, I'm going to go first here. I'm also going to go with Tyler. So this is a clean sweep. And again, I predicted this two years ago and I missed by like a decimal, you know, like 0.1 or 0.2 or something like that. I'm going to go a little bit lower, though. I'm going to say 22.6. I think there'll be enough inconsistency variance, uh, also pace issues, uh, that kind of stuff. But I'll say 22.6. I'm going to I'm going to follow with with uh, with Brady on this one. I am going to say it's going to be Jimmy because uh, I think if they pace him out, there will be enough kind of explosion games from him to to, you know, there'll be some 14, 15s in there. But I, I can see a couple of 30s or some things along those lines. I'm going to say Jimmy 21.4. So that's where I'll go. And then I, I guess I'll I'll go next then. So then I'll say Bam at 20.4. One for Bam. Um, let me do my fourth. I'll say Caleb at twelve point nine. Alex, your third and fourth. My third is Jimmy, obviously, and uh, I'm gonna say twenty point nine. Uh, I had Bam at what, like twenty one point three? Is that what I said? So, yeah, that sounds about right. I don't, I don't think it'll be a big difference. And I think it'll be a pretty balanced offense just with that being the, the order, in my opinion. Uh, after that, I'm going to go lower than you on Caleb. I think he, he's going to be the fourth. Um, but I'm going to go lower. I'm going to say 11.2, 11.2, because I think he, he he'll he'll have an increased role, but I don't think it's going to be similar to, like, what Tyler had a couple of seasons ago when he was six man, where it's just all about him getting shots up. He will get more shots up, but I feel like it's going to be a hybrid type of thing where, you know, he's attacking a little bit more and, and, and has a little bit more usage, but he's also, you know, balancing out being just a role player for their better players when, when he's sharing the court with them. So I like, I like that number. And then um, am I doing fifth or I don't remember how we're doing no, this. No, no, no. Okay. I'm going to make Brady do that. So Brady, give me your three, four and five. Swing it back to me. Okay, so Bam is going to be my third. I'll say 21. I'll say I'll say 21.1. I think it'll be somewhere around there. Uh, I think we're all going to have Caleb in our fourth slot. That's the issue, I think, is the points per game part because I, I am curious to see what kind of role he has, particularly on offense. I think he I'm closer to Ethan's though. I honestly might go above Ethan. I think I think Caleb's actually gonna have a really good offensive year. Um I'll say thirteen. I'll say thirteen even. Thirteen point uh, okay. zero. And okay. right above me. That's like price is right, you know, closest yeah, that. That's what I had to do. I had to I wanted to be right on that one. Um now this is where I am still going back and forth between between a couple of players. But I think I might go Kyle. I think I might go Kyle at like ten point oh. five. I mean, ten point double digits. He, but I mean, he averaged double digits last year. He was he was somebody that was above eleven last year, and he's double he's, digits. <laughs> he's literally they don't have Gabe anymore, and he has to play. He has to play. Like we keep debating about the point guard slot, but either way, he's has to be on the floor somewhat. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. What did I say? Ten point five. Yeah, I'll stick mm-hmm. to it. I'll stick to it. Oh boy! All right. Well, um, I'm not going Kyle, so I'll just <laughs> I'll throw that out. There. Um, twist. I'm looking at I'm looking I'm looking at three others, and one is a little bit of a cheat because I could see the rookie sliding Ooh. in here. I I could see Jaime Hawkins sliding in here, not while well, not playing the full complement of games. So, in other words playing at least like 30 to 40 games, but getting some games where he is featured in some way because Jimmy is out or others are out. So I, I'm just throwing, I'm not going to do it, but I thought about it because I, I, I think there's a chance like that he, he could get, could get featured. So the other ones I was looking at, then I'm thinking Josh. Okay. But I really think that Josh's role for the heat is again, more of a connector. I don't think they're going to go to him for a ton of scoring consistently. It's not the same as it was before. Um, I'm going to go totally off the board with this. Then I'm going to say nobody else is in double figures, but the guy who gets consistent playing time has an offensive mindset 
And Spo is going to probably go to him a little bit to carry at times, even though he won't play the full 82 either, is Thomas Bryant. And I'm going to say <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Bryant at 8.7 points will be, and again, that's not going to be with 82 games. There may be a whole month he doesn't play because Spo's tired of his defense. But I'm going to say Thomas Bryant at 8.7 points is their fifth leading scorer, which means I have Kyle under that. Alex, go. Honestly, you've you've given me a lot to think about there. I like the Hawkins line of thought because if if he is playing in more of those games where like a Jimmy is out, a Tyler is out, he will have, you know, he, he there's potential there for big scoring games or you know big relative to what you'd expect from him. Mm -hmm. um, so that one actually made me think a little bit, and I was before that I was going back and forth between Kyle and Josh. The Bryant one made me think because I do think he's pretty damn like. Um, active out there uh like when when he feels like he has good position he's gonna go for the shot i, I like what he's done um it's really tough because i do I, i'm kind of with you like i think a lot of these guys will be around a similar amount of points per game when, when you talk about josh duncan kyle even brian and even hackers who obviously is a different situation because he i don't know if he'll be there consistently every night but I think they're all going to be somewhere in between seven and ten points a game you know what i mean it's hard to figure out which one and I'm trying not to give a cop out answer, so I'm well, gonna there's go. There's two others. There's two others we haven't even mentioned who I think could be in that seven to ten point a game mix, also. Who? Which is Duncan and Haywood. Well, yeah. Um, that's the thing. It's hard to figure out who is gonna get more playing time. I guess um, when you're just talking about you know minutes, but I'm trying to like do the math in my head. I'm gonna say. I'm going to say Kyle. I'm going to say Kyle. I, I didn't think I was going to go there at first, but I think Brady's right that they need him to play. He won't be playing 30 minutes a game, and I think that's where it kind of had me thinking a little bit because he he started off playing more last season. But I do think they're going to need him to play around 25, maybe more. So I'm, I'm going to say Kyle, but I, I don't feel good about it. Like, I really don't because I think these guys are all going to be so bunched up together, so I wouldn't be surprised if Kyle was, like, under four more guys, but it's all, like, really similar range i could see josh averaging around nine i can see brian averaging around there duncan highsmith it feels like all these guys are going to be in similar kind of playing time more or less that's why i felt it was well, top one, heavy one, the one the one thing to be concerned about with this whole points per game exercise again because this is such an archaic stat is guys who get thrown in at the end of a game like when spo empties the bench or something like that and then it counts against their points per game. Okay, now for Omar Yurtsev, this was great because he would rack up like 12, 12 points in three minutes when nobody cared. So there, there are certain players like that does warp it. Well, the I good just thing is that if, they, if they repeat the clutch stuff, there won't be many. <laughs> there well, won't be many of those. Well, let, let, let me read to you guys what it was last year and kind of where we've gone with this, and then we'll close this out. And we appreciate our sponsors, All Pro Construction Builders, and, of course, Rocky Sports Center. Make sure you sign up for the 2K tournament on Friday uh, for Friday night. But last year it was Jimmy won at 22-9. So, Brady, actually you have an increase with him. Alex and I both have a decrease with him. Bam was second at 20.4. Um, I have a slight decrease to 20.1. 20, 20 you guys both have an increase with him, a slight increase with him. Uh, Tyler last year was third at 20.1. Brady, you have him going up four points to 24.1. Alex, you have him going up uh, almost four points, 23.4. I have him going up uh, a little over a point and a half, uh, a point and a half to 22.6. Last year, Struess was fourth at 11.5, so that is some scoring they need to replace. Kyle was at 11.2. By the way, you didn't give me your number, Alex. What is your number for Kyle? Uh, let's say 10.2. Okay, so you both have him going down, but not as much as I do, because I have him below 8.7, which is Brian's number. Uh, last year, by the way, Oladipo was sixth. And again, this is what I'm talking about with like the variance of this, because the, Oladipo averaged 10.7, not because he did that while he was playing with other guys, but a lot of times because he was not. Right, like he would it might replace be, Jimmy, and get, it might be Swider when he comes in late in the game and just knocks out a couple right. threes. That's what, that, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Now, Vic did play 42 games, so I, I guess I should have specified you got to play at least half the games, right? So let's say 41 games. Now, last year Caleb was at 9.6. We all have an increase there. 13.0, 11.2, 12.9. Last year Gabe was at 9.4. So again, that's scoring that they need to replace. 
Uh, Love was at 7.7. None of us picked him uh, for the top five. D- Cody Zeller was at 6.5. Again, the limited sample size. Duncan Robinson was at 6.4. Do we think Duncan's number goes up? Has to. Yes. Has to. Right? Yeah. I think he's in that right. range. So I, I think, think he'll he be around eight or, nine. Eight, eight or nine. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, going down a little bit, Highsmith was at 4.4. I think that goes up when he plays. But it, it's asking a lot to do more than double that. So, all right. So just to go over the list again, and we'll keep track of these, but Brady, Tyler, 24.1, Jimmy, 23.3, Bamp, 21.1, Caleb, 13.0, Kyle, 10.5. I'm going to be looking at you every time he doesn't shoot this season. Alex, Tyler, 23.4, Bam, 21.3, Jimmy, 20.9, Caleb, 11.2, Kyle, 10.2, me, Tyler, 22.6, Jimmy, 21.4, Bam, 20.1, Caleb, 12.9. And honestly, I think I might have gone low on that. I might, I probably should have gone about a point higher, but I'll, I'll leave it there. And Bryant, 8.7. So my total cum here is a little bit lower than you guys. Um, cause I do think there's going to be some variants of guys who are in out. And I, I think there could be as many as seven guys between six and nine points per game, kind of where I have Bryant as the leader of them. But I just think, again, depending on rotation injuries, how Spo uses them, uh, that that's the way that's going to play out. All right. Well, we've already gone 42 minutes today, so we're going to cut this now. We'll see you Friday at the watch party, or at least Alex and maybe Brady will have a good day, everybody.